Again, we are joined by Purdue head coach Matt Painter, Travion Williams, Sasha, Sasha Stefanovic, Aaron, and Eric Hunter Jr. We're going to start with an opening statement from Coach Painter, and then we'll direct the questions to the student athletes. I want to congratulate uh, St. Peter's. I thought they were excellent today in their effort. Um, they, they beat us like they beat the other two teams. They had a strong will, grimy, tough, into you. And um, Sheen Holloway's done an unbelievable job there at St. Peter's. So hat, hats off to those guys and good luck to those guys. And, you know, it's really hard when you have seniors and that put in so much. And uh, everybody feels this way except one team. And it's, uh, it's hard to put into words. These guys sacrificed a lot for us to, to get to this point. And I always talk to them about it. You got to fight your ass off to get in position so you can do something. Not everybody gets to do something. You got to fight to be able to do something. And we fought and got in this position. And then obviously we got outplayed today by St. Peter's. But like I said to start, uh, give them credit. Um, they played well. He's done a fabulous job with his team. And, um, you know, wish we could have, I could have coached better. Wish we could have played a little bit better, but you know that's that's part of competition. Thank you, Coach. Questions for the players back here. Zach Braziller, New York Post. What specifically do you think they did to to Jaden defensively? You know, six turnovers, nine points. Was there something they did differently than other teams have done? I don't know. I think they just did a good job of bottling him up, um, trying to you know, force him to make tough passes and, and tough plays and contested shots. But um, give them credit. You know, they, they game planned well and they, they did a good job. Brian Newberg, GoldenBlack.com. Eric, why was it so hard to score against them? What were they specifically doing? Were they, were they really taken away and all that? Um, I think they were physical with this they, I mean, from the jump. Uh, they try to take stuff away and take us out of our actions and, and just really be aggressive with us on the perimeter. Uh, Mike Carmen, Lafayette Journal and Courier. Travion, just when the game ended, you kind of went to the quarter and put your hands on your knees. Just what were the, I guess, sort of the thoughts at that point? Um, I, I'm honestly still in shock. You know, I, it, it just doesn't feel real. I would just wish we could have. <clears throat> I wish we could have played a little bit better, um, like Coach said. And um, man, like you got to give them their respect. You know, that's that's a real team. Um, and if you don't respect them, you know, you'll get outplayed, like kind of like we did today. So, um, man, I, I just like I said, I'm still in shock. But um, you know, obviously we we all expected to to go a little further, but um, just didn't go our way. So, Dave. Uh, Dave Jones from Penn Live. Trevion, there was a point there in the fairly late in the second half where you just kind of took over. Could you uh, describe your mindset at that point and what you thought after you got done? I think you guys were up four after being down four. Um, man, I, I immediately thought about North Texas. This is a similar situation. Um, you know, we got down against them, and I remember, you know, not being able or my shots not falling, you know, not being able to contribute the way I wanted to. So, um, you know, like I said, this is a kind of similar situation. I just wanted to kind of be patient with myself and, um, you know, understand that every possession, you know, matters. So um, it was definitely a similar situation. But, uh, you know, I, I just, like I said, I, I remember how that felt and um, I wanted to do anything to help my team win. So. Tom, and then we'll go to the back. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Purdue. Sasha and Travion touched on a little bit just on that ending and the finality of it all. And, uh, can you tell us your thoughts about what was going on there in those final few seconds and from there to now? Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I, like, my mind is blank right now. I, I can't you know, recall exactly what happened. But, um, you know, they made plays down the stretch, and, you know, we, uh, we, made, we made some fouls and uh, unnecessary fouls. and. Know, cost us, you know, credit to them. They made the free throws and they executed down the stretch and um, played good defense. So. Okay. Right so, uh, 
Sam Marsdale. Go ahead. Sam Marsdale, 24-7 sports. Um, Sasha, 11 points in the first half. Uh, started really hot, only took three shots in the second half. Um, what, um, just not getting enough looks or? I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I thought I had three good looks in the second half and, uh, you know, I just didn't make them. You know, those are, <clears throat> Those are things you're gonna you know you're gonna replay in your mind all the time. That what if I made a couple more and it is what it is, you know. You here in the front. Uh, Taylor Tanbaum, WTHR and Indy. I know you mentioned the respect thing when it came to North Texas. Coach yesterday talked a lot about you know whoever has the most competitive spirit is gonna win this game. Did you feel like the respect factor was there, and did you feel like the cons Competitive spirit was lacking for whatever reason, just from the beginning. If, if you can pinpoint that for you guys. Um, I'm, I mean, I, like I said, I'm, I'm still in shock, honestly. Um, you know, I, I wish we could have came out, you know, with with a little more energy. Um, you know, I, I know we talked about respecting that team and. I know we talked about you know treating like the best team in the, in the tournament, but uh, I don't I don't think everybody bought into that, and um, you know they just play harder than us. Um, they, they they made their free throws, um, you know they got calls. You know obviously being away, you know they're you know right not far from here, so you know they got a lot of calls in a way, um, you know. But you, you just got to be ten points better. You know there's a lot of things we could have done differently um, to to kind of prevent that. So. Um, like I said, I just wish we, we would have came in and, and jumped right on them, you know, from the jump. So, let's go. One more for the student athletes in the back, please. Hi guys, Sarah Germano with the Financial Times. Um, I know you guys are all feeling pretty dejected right now, um, but I'm wondering if it makes a difference to, you know, go out of the tournament to the Cinderella, or if that has an impact at all on how you're feeling. Uh, no, not really. I mean, they're. Uh, they're a good team. Like they, they earned their way to the Elite Eight, and uh, Cinderella or not, like they, they earned it. So, 15 seed, who cares? Like they're, they're good. They're a good team. They could beat anybody. Um, so no, it doesn't really make a difference. To be honest, it still sucks. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Co questions for Coach? Back in the middle. Okay, right there, Chris. Yeah, um, Coach Painter. Um, it just when it looked like Trevin Williams was about to get into that rhythm, he had scored like eight straight points or something. And what happened? Did they, what, did they, what type of, of adjustments did they make defensively to oh. stop your inside game? Yeah. But we, and we didn't, you know, we didn't probe the defense like we should. They went to a zone like he does in that last four or five minutes. He did it against Kentucky. Um, he did it against Murray State. We had some things that we would worked on to go to. We got it to him low, and then he got fouled one time. The other time we didn't execute. Um, the other time, I know I keep saying that, but um, I'm trying to, re you know, remember it in my head and in sequence. Um, you know, J.I. got got in there and got us, a, got us a good three in the corner that we just missed, and then we get the rebounds. So he does a really good job of mixing and going to that. It's, it's not really a zone. It's just a camouflage and as a zone, and they're going to match up and go to a man. So we, we still wanted to get the ball in there, but we had to, you know, we had to keep probing the defense. I thought Jaden made some really good passes in that stretch getting him the ball. We got him the ball deep there. We wanted to keep coming to it. They tried to bottle us up and take that away. And with that, you know, we got a really good corner three in front of our bench that was wide open. We got another corner three away from us that was wide open. Like Sasha talked about, like the looks he got in that stretch, two were, were pretty good. And so um, when you get good shots and you, and you just don't knock them down, you know, as a coach, you, you, you try to stay process based. But I don't want to take anything away from St. Peter's or Coach Holloway. He, he did a fabulous job like he's done all tournament. Coach, Alex Hickey with Saturday Tradition. Um, between you and Coach Katie, this program's had so many close calls right. over the years. Just yep. how much, to what extent does that weigh on you right now in moments like this? Yeah, it, it, it weighs on you. Obviously, we, we worked hard to have to win two games to get here. Um, we were in the Elite Eight three years ago. Obviously, we didn't have a tournament two years ago. Um, it, it, it eats at you, man. There's like, you work hard. Um, to do things and to work and represent your school and to put yourself in a position um, 
to do well. It's, it's so hard to get in position to do well. And that's kind of been a, like, you know, these guys won 29 games and, and you feel awful. You know, we put ourselves in a position to win a Big Ten championship. We didn't. We put ourselves in a position in the championship game or tournament. We didn't. You know, you get, you know, to this point right here, and you, you know, you don't move forward. But it's also anybody can have a good team. We have a good program. Our guys graduate. You know, we're successful. We have the most Big Ten championships of any school in the Big Ten. We just haven't gotten over that hurdle. We just haven't gotten that push to where we, you know, we haven't been to a Final Four in 42 years. So yeah, I think about it all the time, but it, it's not gonna stop me from driving to get there and, and get back in this position again and um, try to get over that hurdle. That's what, you know, our players deserve and our fans deserve, and, um, but it's, it's part of competition. It's, it, it's a very, very competitive world. Matt, now that it's all over, do you have any theories as to why this team struggles so much to take care of the basketball and value possessions? Repeat what you said, I'm sorry. Now that it's all over, do you have any theories as to why this team struggled the way it did to take care of the basketball and really value possessions, yeah. things you've always yeah. obviously really emphasized? Yeah, you don't, um, you know, you don't like to put a label on your group. You like to grow through things and make weaknesses strengths. Um, we've proven if we don't turn the ball over, we can beat anybody in the country. This was my statement. And if we turn the ball over, we can get beat by anybody in the country outside of probably playing on our home court. If we can still turn the ball over, probably beat somebody at home. And that's just the way we are. And so like when we turn the ball over 10 times in Indiana in the first half, and then they, they make a shot to beat us at the end, we go on a six game winning streak in conference, and then it, it, it rears its ugly head again. And that's what I always talk to our guys about, like keeping things simple. One of the first things I talked about going out to our guys today is passing and catching. Think about that. We got to do a good job passing and catching. And like a kid who's getting recruited like has no idea when they get into like a buzzsaw defense like that right there. But we got teams in our league that play like that all the time. So it's not like we've never seen that. But once again, don't take anything away from them. They did it. They did the work. They, they're the one that affected us. So, you know, we have, you know, those turnovers and it rears its ugly head again. And, and we have that number and we get around that 15 number. You know, that's trouble for us. We got to outscore you a little bit now. We've taken away, we have such a good offensive rebound percentage. We have such a good field goal percentage for the whole season. So if you let us shoot the basketball and we get a good shot, we got a good percentage, but we also got a great offensive rebound position. But if you turn it over and you're running the other way, that's been a struggle. And so yeah. like we've worked on it, man. We put in a lot of time and we've proven we could be good at it, but we weren't as consistent as we needed to be. Tom, go ahead. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Purdue. Uh, Matt, they seem like they did a really good job with Zach in the post, especially like getting yeah. uh, hands on balls, you know, before his moves and things like that. Uh, I'm sure that wasn't a surprise to you, but how they executed that, uh, was that troublesome for you that you couldn't do more? Yes. Yeah, we, we wanted to get him deeper. They did a good job of getting him out a couple times and really fighting um, to their credit. And then once he's not as deep, like he has to be careful on his dribble. And so I thought he made a couple good simple passes there, but then he obviously struggled and kind of passing and catching, just kind of collecting himself. Um, he's a very unique player, but he's got he's to stay fundamentally sound in his moves and what he does and how he passes. And uh, they bothered him. We, you know, we, we, we feel like it's a huge weapon for us, and people don't see that all the time. So if he can just play in the game and be productive and not get there, you know, he's going to foul some people out. He's going to score the ball. He's going to go to the free throw line. And it got flipped on us a little bit there because we didn't take care of it. Go ahead. We're we're at our almost at our limit, uh, so we'll go front, okay. back, and then two more back, and that's it. Uh, uh, Rocket Haverland, Purdue exponent. Painter, it seemed like uh, St. Peter's was fine taking a lot of those mid-range twos. Um, yep. Do you think it had anything to do with that drop coverage? And is that something you're fine letting right. happen from an efficiency standpoint? Yeah, they, they don't shoot a great percentage on their, their runners and their floaters and stuff. But if you let them get too deep, they're going to make those. And that's really what we wanted to do is really step out a couple steps, then get into our drop, not be in a complete drop with it. I know it didn't look that way a couple times at the end, but we really talked about that one to two step out you know, get them going east and west, then drop back so they're not getting those lobs in, in there. But um, no, I, you know, when, when you play numbers and you play percentages, 
getting them away, the one thing that they get a lot of is layups. And I know it's a profound statement or whatever, like you gotta eliminate their layups. We didn't do a good job with, you know, with that. If you watch them play Kentucky, you watch them play Murray State, they get layups. They get, you know, whether those are putbacks or drives or dump downs. So we really wanted the ball to go out. Like, um, where's my man? Um, Dasher, like Dasher at that three. It's not a three-point shooter. It's not the end of the world for us. It's a huge basket at that time, but we wanted to keep the ball out of the paint. When you look at other guys like Eder, like he's one for three. Um, you look at Banks, he's 0 for four. They're six for 21. So we were able to get that at that point. You know, our issue at the end, if you want to get down to, if you want to grab something, is quit fouling people. That's the game. Like, now, can they go make plays like they did before? Like, you go watch the end of the Kentucky game, they're making play after play after play. Like, do they go and make those plays? They, yeah, they sure could. They could make those plays. But, you know, don't put, you know, good free throw shooters. We foul them off the ball twice. We foul on a three-point play. We dive on a guy at the end. That's the game, like right there. Now, they still could have won the game if we don't foul them because they got to be able to make those plays. But, you know, that's Purdue beating Purdue right there. And I, and I, those are the things that you like to have back because you out-rebound somebody, you turn the ball over too much. You take care of that basketball and you don't foul. You know, we're a lot happier at this press conference. Matt, um, you sat Jade in the last 346 of the first half. Was, was that trying to maybe settle him down a little bit? Yes, just just trying to get him to, you know, he he comes and he goes sometimes. And, like, you know, he wants, you know, he wants to do well. You know, I mean, he's a really talented guy, and he's um, just trying to get him to kind of calm down, watch the game a little bit from there, and, and, and settle down. Just make make simple decisions, and just like attack in space. And um, but yeah, that, that's all it was. You know, just just, just trying to, to get him to kind of settle into the game. You know, it's coming off a game at Texas where he didn't shoot in the first half, and then like you know he was still making really good plays. You know, even though he didn't shoot, he was still making plays at that time and like he was getting a little frustrated so we just that's why we did it. Zach and then one more and then that's when um, and we're done. Zach Brazil in your post. All right, Ivy, you know do you look at today as they did a really good job defensively on him or that maybe he just didn't play the way he can play? Both. Both. Like, you know, it's the one thing that happens when you ask somebody a question like this, especially they haven't watched tape yet, you know, it's your perspective. And you don't want your, your perspective to take anything away from another team or another coach. So that's why they did a great job. Like, that needs to be said first and foremost. But this was something for us when, like, they didn't do anything that we haven't seen before. You know, he, he just had to slow down a little bit. Um, and really talented guys. He, you know, he had a fabulous year for us. He was an All-American. Um, but you're going to get a lot of attention. And, um, but, you know, give credit to St. Peter's. They did a great job. Final question. Austin Petaloro, Trend the Philly Hoops. Matt, I know it's probably hard to answer it right now, fresh off the game, but you mentioned having to get over that hurdle to get yeah. to the Final Four and you won't stop working. Right. What do you have to do as a coach for that to happen? What's that look like? Don't foul at the end. I mean, for, for this game, you always dive into the game that you lost. Like, don't turn the basketball over. Like, get people to understand that piece of it we never really got to that point where that number would get there we get beat in the big 10 tournament our, our turnover number is high you know um, we go to michigan state second or third game it'll see it comes down to the wire our turnover number is high we get beat by st you know st peter's our turnover number is high and those games in between that we won the turnover number is low so each team's a little bit different like but you're wasting the, the ability. We rebound the basketball. Like we, how many we out rebound them by? Like th that's normal for us. We, have, you know, if you're gonna rebound like that and people can't handle you there, you know, and you can take care of the basketball and you can just dominate the possession more, and you shoot, you get the third best field goal percentage in the country. You know, but each team's a little bit different in, in things. You just got to keep yeah. working. It's not one thing, you know. And now you lose some personnel. And so, like now, you, you gotta you gotta keep recruiting. But I'm, you know, I'm excited. I mean, I I feel bad for these guys here, but I like the guys that return on our team. I like the guys sitting out. We got players that are, that are sitting out that can play, and we got guys that are coming. So not everybody in the country can sit there. We're the only team in the Sweet 16 that didn't take a transfer. It doesn't mean that we won't. But like we've been able to recruit, we've been able to evaluate, we've been able to develop, and we've been able to have good teams. And, and so, but like you said, it's that fine line, man, when you got to get in position and, and get over that threshold. I don't think it's one thing. 
It's just collectively being just a little bit better. Coach, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Reminder, the transcript from ASAP will be out shortly. And any information and video of the press conference will be in the NCA Digital Media Hub. Thank you. <laughs>